Now, from the news team that's covering the Carolinas, this is Channel 9 Eyewitness News Daybreak at 6. Channel 9 is following breaking news in Huntersville. Right now, police are looking for the people who crashed this car and took off. The string of overnight crimes police believe may be connected. And make sure you grab that jacket this morning as you head out the door. We are waking up to temperatures in the 30s, some areas in the 20s. The timeline for one will warm up and the best chance for rain this week. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm and John I'm, Paul. And I'm Blaine Tallison. It's cold just uh, looking at those yeah. temperatures there. It is 559 with weather. Uh, meteorologist Vicki Graff is in Severe Weather Center 9 and uh, maybe a little bit before it starts to warm up. Hey, we might have to wait a couple of hours before we start to see things really thawing out a bit more. And that sunrise has to get underway first. That's going to happen in the next hour. The temperatures just updated. It's now 29 in Charlotte, 29 in Belmont, 27 in Waxhaw, and 24 in Rockwell. So as you're heading out the door, going back to work today, make sure you grab that winter jacket. You will need it. As we head towards 9 o'clock with full sunshine, we'll start to warm things up into the upper 40s. And then later today, you won't need that that layer. It's going to get warmer with highs getting into the mid 60s. That is well above the average, but I'm tracking a bigger warm up on the way later this week. I'll be pinpointing when some neighborhoods could get close to 70 degrees. That's all coming up ahead. We have weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Lots of folks heading back to work today. How are the roads looking now, John? Yeah, we are starting to get some issues out there. Just starting to crop up. University area first. An accident on University City Boulevard at John Kirk Drive. Uh, no slowdowns at this point. Also, though, there's an accident as well on Billy Graham Parkway over at Scott Futrell, uh, Futrell Drive. So we've got at least two going on right now. The good news is interstates are smooth so far this morning. This is a live look, 85 at Billy Graham. You can see traffic slowly starting to pick up out there. No issues. Now let's check some drive times here coming from Gastonia to Uptown. That's going to take you right around 20 minutes. Airport inbound on Wilkinson, that's taking 15 minutes. Mountain Island Lake into Uptown on Brookshire, just a little over uh, 10 minutes there. Right now, Channel 9 is following breaking news in Northwest Charlotte, where police are looking for the driver and possible passengers who were inside this car before it crashed. These are pictures from Beatty's Ford Road near Carrington Point Drive, where you see that car crash into some trees there. And this happened just before 4.30 this morning. The scene is now clear. Uh, police believe that crash may be connected to a string of a half a dozen burglaries overnight in South Charlotte. We first told you back at 4.30, all the crimes happened within 35 minutes of each other. It's a story you've only seen on Channel 9 this morning. Take a look. We mapped out the six reported break-ins between 1.45 and 2.30 this morning. Police tell us the suspects broke into the businesses by smashing the glass doors and windows with a rock. Police say the first call came in from Ballantyne Commons as for burglars targeted Pizza Hut, JJ Red Hots, and Chef Quo. See the damaged glass doors there. But a half hour later, burglary was then reported over at the Be Good restaurant across Johnston Road. Then, five minutes later, officers responded to Pineville Matthew Road, or burglars hit Chipotle and Kabuto Japanese Steakhouse. Back now to the scene of the crash here in Northwest Charlotte. Uh, police say they searched the area for the possible burglars, but did not find any trace of them. Uh, so they're trying to figure out how many suspects they're looking for this morning. We're going to keep an eye on this. Police say they did step up patrols in South Charlotte to shopping centers overnight. We are asking if any information on the possible suspects is available. As we get those details this morning, we'll continue to update you right here on Daybreak. 602 and a major story Channel 90 is following for your day ahead. All eyes will be on Raleigh as Duke Energy asks to raise your energy bill. As Eyewitness News reporter Gina Esposito explains, this comes one week after Duke agreed to push for a slightly lower increase. Jim. Yeah, Duke has agreed to ask for a slightly lower rate increase for its more than 3 million customers, but they still want customers across the state to pay for the coal ash cleanup. Last week, we told you that the Catawba Riverkeeper hopes that the public is properly represented in these rate decisions, and families impacted by the coal ash said they are closely watching, too. Under the proposal for discussion today, Duke is asking to raise the base rate for customers by 13%, meaning their bills would go up from a 
$11.13 a month to $14 a month. And we still don't know how much the coal ash cleanup will be passed along to customers. The current request wants customers to pay nearly $206 million a year. Attorneys in Raleigh will present their arguments today in these new rate increases. Again, those rates won't take effect until the commission approves them. Live in Uptown, I'm Gina Esposito, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Count on Channel 9 to bring you every development from today's hearing in Raleigh. Watch Eyewitness News starting at 5 today for complete coverage. Another story Channel 9 is following for your day ahead. Mecklenburg County's first African-American district attorney will be sworn in this morning. Governor Roy Cooper announced late last month Spencer Merriweather will fill the position. Merriweather replaces Andrew Murray, who President Trump selected as U.S. Attorney for North Carolina's Western District. Merriweather is scheduled to be sworn in at 8 a.m. and we'll have coverage on Eyewitness News this morning on TV 64. 604 right now and tonight cats will be asking Charlotte City Council for 15.3 million more dollars to complete the Lynx Blue Line extension. Officials say that money is needed to extend contractors into July of next year because of construction delays. The Blue Line extension is still expected to start running in March. The request for more money comes just eight months after City Council approved 25 million in contract amendments for that billion dollar project. Tonight, Council will also decide whether to spend 475,000 on upgrades for the Spectrum Center. This plan includes repairing the plumbing system and building a large restaurant on the founders level. You may remember three years ago, the city approved a huge $27.5 million project for repairs at the arena. This morning, we're asking investigators what caused a deadly construction accident in Steel Creek. Happened yesterday around noon. One person was killed and another rushed to the hospital after falling 40 feet at a site on Westinghouse Boulevard. As of last night, the survivor was in stable condition. Our crew noticed investigators there focusing on an area surrounding several cranes and around a piece of metal equipment on the ground. OSHA is investigating what happened. Channel 9 will continue to push for answers in this investigation, and we're going to post any new information online at WSOCTV.com. Tourists are being rushed away from a rumbling volcano in Bali that could erupt at any moment. It shut down the international airport. Tens of thousands of travelers now stranded as you see the ash spewing from Mount Agoon. Uh, they're trying to leave after Indonesian officials ordered evacuations. The volcano erupted three times over the weekend. These were small, but officials are now worried there could be a larger eruption. Congress returns to Washington, D.C. today after the Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah, and as John Lawrence reports, time is running out for lawmakers to pass some major legislation, including the tax overhaul. President Trump back at the White House tweeting Sunday that he has possibly done more than any 10-month president. On Tuesday, Mr. Trump meets with Senate Republicans to talk taxes. It's an issue the GOP wants to get through the Senate before 2018. To every Republican senator, the fate of the parties in our hands, as well as that of the economy. The economy needs a tax cut, and the Republican Party needs to deliver, so I think we'll get there. The tax breaks for the wealthiest people are permanent. That's just unfair, and that's why half of the American people are skeptical about this Trump tax plan. Another matter in Washington, who will lead the nation's Consumer Financial Protection Bureau? Leandra English is suing President Trump over the issue. She was made the acting director by her boss, outgoing director Richard Cordray. But hours later, President Trump announced his appointee for the position, Budget Director Mick Mulvaney. The suit is asking the court to block Mulvaney's appointment. And there's a push to turn the DREAM Act into reality for undocumented immigrants over the next few weeks. I think most Americans want to give these DREAM Act kids a more certain life. So let's do it in December. Let's do it for the good of the country. A bipartisan solution to this problem to make sure that these young people have a chance to earn their way into citizenship. We can do this and we can get it done before the end of the year. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Republicans have raised concerns over the tax reform bill, including its repeal of the Affordable Care Act's individual insurance mandate, breaks for corporations over small businesses, and increasing the deficit by one and a half trillion dollars. Right now it is 608. The Panthers beat the Jets yesterday, securing their fourth straight win. It is actually the team's longest winning streak now since December 2015. You may remember that's when they went on to the Super Bowl. Yesterday in the Meadowlands, Cam Newton scored the team's only touchdown in the first half. Fast forwarding now to the fourth quarter when the team was able to seal the win right here. Luke Keekley picked up a fumble, ran it right into the end zone. 
Then on special teams, Kalen Clay ran back up punt for another touchdown. At the end of the day, you know, we found ways to win the football game, and that's what you have to have. You have to have those type of characteristics and those genetics to, you know, um, you know ground out a win. Well, they sure did today. We expect to learn how Greg Olson's foot is doing, though. Yesterday was his first game back since undergoing surgery. He was pulled out of the game in the third quarter after experiencing some soreness. The team's hoping their star tight end will be ready to play this week at a critical division game against the Saints. Now, yesterday, the Saints took on the NFC West leading Los Angeles Rams. Saints fell behind. A late comeback push fell short. They could not recover the onside kick there. The Saints losing it 26-20, bringing an end to their eight-game winning streak. This Sunday will be a big chance for the Panthers to take control of the division with the win if they win it in New Orleans. Well, today's expected to be another big day at Charlotte Douglas. More than 29,000 originating flyers are expected, along with 100,000 who catch connecting flights at the airport. This morning, long term one, four, and daily north lots are all closed. And the roads are expected to be slammed as well as thousands return home. And the suspension on NCDOT road and lane closures will continue today, but those closures will be put back in place tonight starting at 8. And according to the travel site, ways if you can, you want to avoid driving between 4 and 6 p.m. And if you are going to go to the airport today, we've made it easy for you to check the status of your flight before you head out the door. Log on to WSOCTV.com and scroll over the traffic tab to use the flight tracker. And uh, as you head to the airport or you know anybody who is, we are checking weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Yeah, we've got some clear skies, so it shouldn't uh, be any issues out there this morning, Vicki. Thankfully, most of the country right now is fairly quiet as we have high pressure in place across a, the midsection of the country. It's leaving us dry, no issues at the airport weather-wise. I'm tracking some showers across New England and then also the West Coast. And we have had some travel issues on the West Coast, mainly closer to San Francisco. That's where we are seeing some delays right now. Make sure you check your flights before you head out the door, but I don't anticipate any issues here in Charlotte due to weather. Closer to home, it's a cool start, so if you're heading out on the roads this morning, maybe bringing the kids to the bus stop, make sure they are dressed in layers. Later today, you won't need that heavy winter coat. It's going to be sunny and warmer. Temperatures rebound into the mid-60s, and it is going to stay dry over the next several days. We need rain. I am tracking a small chance later this week. I'll show you when it arrives coming up at 611. Let's get to check the roads right now with Blaine. And we do have some issues starting to pop up. A couple accidents, uh, one located at Billy Graham at Scott Futural Drive in West Charlotte in the University City area. We have an accident there located on University City Boulevard at John Kirk Drive. And switching over to the lot pictures on Independence at uh, Pecan. You can see traffic starting to pick up in that area, but uh, so far East Charlotte and other areas, no big issues on Independence. New for daybreak, a new rest stop for drivers along I-77 in Iredale County is months behind schedule. Our partners at the Statesville Record and Landmark tell us the $18 million rest stop was set to open in September, but there's issues with placing sewer lines, and that's delaying the opening. It's now set to open sometime early next year. The rest stop is being built in the median. It'll replace existing facilities north and southbound.